Hey guys, it's Jen, and today I wanted to react to your assumptions about me. If you hear a little bit of cooing or coughing or baby noises in the background, it's because Ezra is hanging out with me right over there. Mom life, gotta still work and eat and raise babies. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this. I looked through some of the questions, and I feel like some of them are going to be things I've never answered before, so it should be pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and get started with these questions. First question, you're not a picky eater. This is actually pretty true. I am pretty open-minded to trying a lot of different things. I love trying foods from different countries, but I will say I'm not necessarily picky, but I do really, really love really good food. So a little bit of a foodie, but not overly critical. Next assumption, you can eat whatever you want and stay thin. So actually, this is something that people have commented on the entire time I've been online, but even before then, when I was growing up, when I was a teenager, everyone was always saying like, oh, you should eat a hamburger. But if anybody actually has gone to eat with me, they would know that I eat basically the same as Ben, and he's like more than twice my size in general. So I I consume a lot more than you would think for someone of my size. So that's true. You can eat whatever you want and stay thin. But I do feel like generally I tend to like healthier food. I just don't have a huge craving for a lot of like sweets or junk food. You always knew how to do your amazing makeup. So I think that people who had followed my blog for many years before would know that this is not true because <laughs> I have some pretty embarrassing makeup looks. I think this was before everybody was a pro at blending and contouring and shaping and all of that. So I definitely experimented with a lot of weird colors and they were not always wins. Somebody said that you wouldn't know any Korean. Was so surprised you listened to K-pop from your post. As she said, I've been a K-pop fan since the very beginning. I was really into K-pop when I was in elementary school growing up. My parents would rent those music countdown shows. They would burn them onto VHS discs and then at your local Asian grocery store you could rent the tapes and I was so obsessed with watching this one with a group called Rula and they had a song that was like uh oh to Maria. I don't know if you guys recognize it if you do let me know in the comments because I know you are a super old school k-pop fan but I loved that song I loved that dancing I've been a huge fan of k-pop and Korean entertainment from a very young age and I actually feel like that instilled a lot of Korean pride within me from a very very young age even though I grew up a very non-Asian community. You were very patient and never raise your voice or get angry at your kids. Ben and I both try very hard to be calm and not get too heated in front of the kids, but sometimes it just happens. We're not perfect parents. We do raise our voices once in a while, and sometimes we have to tell the other person like, hey, just don't yell in front of the kids. Don't raise your voice. We try to keep each other in check. Before we had kids, if we were in that situation, if one of us called us out, it would probably make the other one even more angry. But I think now as parents, we just put our kids as such a higher priority that sometimes that does pull us back a little bit. But I think the more important thing than never raising your voice in front of your kids is that when it inevitably happens, we make up in front of the children, teaching them how to make up and we're very quick to apologize. So if we raised our voice, we always make it a point to say that we're sorry and have them see that. You look taller in videos. I think people, again, if you've followed for a while, you probably know that I am a pretty short person. I'm about four foot 11, not even five feet tall. Gosh, maybe someday when I grow up. I definitely look taller in videos, but I don't think it's because I'm doing anything to try to make myself look taller. I think it's just because you're only looking at me from the boobs up, so there's not a lot of things that you can see for context. You were outgoing as a kid. There are some aspects that are true to this and some aspects not true to this because I grew up moving around quite a lot in elementary school and depending on the school I went to, I either had a lot of friends and was really outgoing or some schools I went to, the kids were actually really mean to me for being the new student and looking very, very different. Honestly, some of my racist kind of moments from my past were because I moved schools and some places 
really embraced me and some places didn't. So I definitely had times where I was like super shy or super outgoing. That you don't speak much Korean. I think it kind of depends on your definition of what much Korean is because I do speak Korean every day, but most of my Korean is speaking to a two year old. So yes and no, like I do speak Korean a lot when my parents are around, but I'm definitely not fluent like a native Korean speaker. I speak it an okay amount in my daily life. That I was born and raised in California. This is definitely not true. Especially if you've watched my videos for a while, you would know that I started filming and started my entire YouTube channel while I was living in Kansas. I was Kansas born and raised and I've lived in California for about seven years or so now. That I take things slow in life because I speak slowly in my videos. I think me speaking slowly in my videos has more to do with the fact that I was born and raised in Kansas where people do tend to speak slower than they do on either of the coasts. However, my brain definitely doesn't run slowly. So I would say it's more that I try to be really careful and articulate how I'm feeling and thinking in my videos just so it comes across really clearly. I have Asian girl handwriting. That is definitely not not true. The funny thing is I feel like I know exactly what you're saying, like really cute, very cleanly written ones with like little hearts for the eyes sometimes. I have some friends and I don't know how they do this, but their handwriting literally looks like a font and that is not me. I do have probably more feminine handwriting than masculine handwriting, but it gets a little sloppy at times and it also mixes a lot of like cursive and non-cursive all jumbled together. But not what I would consider to be typical Asian girl handwriting. Oh, this is a good one. You're really religious. I would say this is true. I love Jesus. I am a Christian and I definitely believe it so strongly as the foundation of my entire life. However, I would say I'm not religious in the sense that I like to speak in a way that comes off as like religiosity. I've heard some people even call it like jesus -ese. You know, in certain church environments, they like to have almost like a church slang of like, bless you child. For me, in the way that I raise my family, I just want it to be a little more down to earth and practical for our daily living. You know, I feel like God exists, God affects us and everything we do. And it's a really important, solid foundation for our family, which I believe is the truth. I definitely try to live by that every day. Basically what I'm trying to say is instead of calling it religious, where it's about what I tell other people to do or how to live their lives, I just try to live by example and doing what I feel is right by God. Some people may consider that to be religious and then some people people may consider that to be more of like a spiritual relationship, which I feel more comfortable saying I'm in that camp. You are an early bird. Ooh, buddy, this is not true. <laughs> if anything, I'm definitely more of a night owl. And one good benefit to having children is that because their routines are so priority and so very important, it's kind of forced me to wake up at a normal time of day and go to bed at a normal time of night, which is definitely not my natural tendency. But I do think Think it is a lot healthier and I'm happy that I have gone through that change but definitely a night owl. You are always a straight A student. My first B plus that I ever got was in college. Was that your only B plus? No I had a couple of B pluses in college and I had some A minuses. You are always the type to cry during the movie. I think it's important to express your emotions when you watch something that moves you. Okay? I cry at movies. You're more comfortable around Asians and the majority of your friends are Asian. This is a very interesting question because for most of my life, I had the exact opposite experience. I had basically almost no Asian friends growing up outside of church because we did go to a Korean church. I actually started going to church with my best friend in junior high, which was a non-Asian church. So most of my years growing up, I was honestly mostly surrounded by Caucasians. But after having moved to LA, I would say now most of my friends are Asian. And I think that there are some things culturally that it's nice to 
not have spoken out loud. It's just like a cultural understanding that I do have with some of my Asian American friends. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I am no longer comfortable being around different kinds of groups of people. I would say because I had a more broad experience growing up than some of my Asian American friends, I feel like I can transition between different groups of people a little bit better, but I definitely have more of a hyper awareness of cultural differences at times and just trying to be sensitive to that. This assumption is that my parents live with me so I have lots of hands on hand to help me with the children. This is definitely not true. I don't have my parents living with me. I don't have a nanny or other people to take care of my kids. Aria, we didn't start taking her to daycare until she was around two years old and as of now, Ezra is about seven and a half months old and he is home with us all the time. We are working and filming and doing everything we need to do with him all the time right now so occasionally my parents they will come and visit for a couple days that's when Ben and I will try to sneak out to get a little ice cream date after lunch when they're asleep but otherwise I really wish I had more help that'd be amazing no matter how much I try to bribe my parents to move in with me my mom is like we already raised you we don't have to raise your kids too <laughs> You used to want to have double eyelids, but now you don't. I'm going to be completely honest that I had periods of my life where I was so extremely wanting to get double eyelid surgery. And I had periods of my life where I was extremely not wanting to get eyelid surgery. I feel like honestly, because of my position in what I'm doing, how I did monolid tutorials and helped so many other girls to feel comfortable about their eyelids, it empowered me to just continue on with the eyes that I was born with. Whether they get kind of creasy or are completely monolidded, I just try to worry about it less than I used to. It really is not the end of the world if one eye has a crease and one doesn't. I don't love it and in a perfect world, if I could get even eyelids or creases with no consequences, then would I consider that? Yeah, I think I would, but I I think in the position that I'm in, it's not really something that's on the table for me right now. Most people who have monolids maybe struggle with that. In the same way that a lot of girls with small boobs are like, it would be nice to have bigger boobs, but do I want to go through all of the consequences of having surgery and all of that? It's a lot of questions with a lot of follow-up repercussions in both positive and negative ways. So it's just a lot to think about and I think that's okay. That's just a natural part of not necessarily necessarily being the societal norm, but just because you're not a part of the societal norm doesn't mean you're not normal and doesn't mean there's anything wrong or that it's less beautiful. And I feel that way about both eyelids and boobs. I spend more money than Ben does and we have a shared bank account. I actually am not sure. I would say honestly probably not because the bigger purchases that we have to make which tend to be work equipment or like car a lot of our big purchases are under both our names so i'll give you that the car we share the house we share i guess now that i think about it we probably spend pretty evenly but i'm definitely the one that does more frequent shopping they just might not be as much as like his is bigger key purchases. Oh, and Ben and I have actually shared a bank account for over 10 years. From the moment we were married, we've had a joint bank account. And if you wanna know more information about our finances, how we spend our money, basically any of that, we actually did an entire Ask Jen and Ben video about that. So I will link it up there and in the description box down below. I actually think it's a lot more interesting than it sounds. Okay, so this assumption is that I never had any imperfections growing up i.e. acne, weight gain, etc. This is so not true. Oh my goodness. I think I started having really bad acne when I was about 11 years old. It was really bad, you guys. Whenever we would have family get-togethers, family members like aunts would come up to me and ask if I was washing my face or not. They would be asking about my skincare habits 
and if I shouldn't be eating certain foods and they would make comments about oh you grew another diamond on your forehead all of the things that can be super traumatizing to a young teen slash preteen it was very scarring emotionally and physically I had so much hyperpigmentation from it I went through so many rounds of trying to go to the dermatologist to fix it and then having excessive guilt about the money spent on products to try to fix it my mom tried to take me to a department store but I felt so guilty about her spending money on something that I felt like was my fault in having bad skin I would just go home and cry about it my teenage insecurities with my skin run very very deep so if any of you are going through that honey I feel you also I have some videos my first heart to heart video was all about my acne and skincare journey so I will link that down below in case you haven't seen it but yes definitely did not have perfect skin so you watch K drama when the kids are asleep and the answer is maybe I would have if I had my kids like 10 years ago I haven't watched a lot of K dramas recently usually when the kids are asleep I try to watch something really short and sweet because I don't know when they're gonna wake up again honestly that tends to be YouTube videos I love YouTube Harmony and Haraboji are so big on watching the K dramas though every time they visit it's like blasting from the upstairs bedroom this assumption is you like Ezra more than Arya oh my gosh no I love both of my kids I have to say right now because he's an infant and I'm still breastfeeding him there's so many times where I have to take more care of Ezra just because of the physical attachment that he needs with me versus Ben having to watch Arya while I'm taking care of Ezra that's just a normal cycle once you have two children sometimes the mom has to handle the younger one just because of the process of how they eat but no I love both of them so much and I definitely would not be able to choose one more than the other which is so funny because Ben and I had a lot of talks about this before Ezra was born we're like sure people say they don't choose sides with their kids but I bet they have a favorite I think after having both I can honestly say that I do love both equally. I really don't think I could choose one over the other. So the next assumption is really funny. The assumption is that I was really popular in high school, which I think is hilarious because I was definitely not. In fact, if you asked anybody from my high school, other people would probably agree that I was not very popular in high school. I wasn't necessarily unpopular. Like I wasn't in the outs with anyone. I wasn't like eating lunch alone. I just wasn't part of the popular crowd. I think a lot of people knew who I was just because I did a lot of activities. I was really academic. I was in the top 10 of my graduating class in high school. I was the artist of the year for my senior class. I did theater and I did choir, but those activities I feel like maybe are cooler activities now and back then it was a little bit more on the geeky end. <laughs> so I had a lot of friends. My group of friends, we were really happy hanging out with each other, but it wasn't really ever my my goal to be popular in the first place. People were aware of me. I was Asian Jen, which I still am. I'm still an Asian and I'm Jen. Okay, there's just lots of Asian Jens in the world and not just me, the only Asian Jen. But yeah, not the popular one. Through trial and tribulation, YouTube boosted your confidence. In a way, I think I always sort of had an inner confidence about myself just because I was so different than everyone else around me when I was growing up that I sort of learned to just dance to the beat of my own drum especially back then when I started since a lot of people weren't doing it there weren't really examples of like successes you just did it because it was a weird quirky hobby you have to have a certain amount of confidence to just be like yeah okay I'll figure this out but on the other hand I realized that for the first time in my life I found like-minded people who looked like me that felt inspired by what I had to share these things that I had just taught myself because I didn't have any guidance for makeup I didn't have anybody who looked like me around me to show me what to do. When I saw that happening, when for the first time in my life, I found my tribe, I found my group of people who really embraced me just for being myself. And especially because I looked the way that I did and because I acted the way that I did. I think inevitably that did really boost my confidence so much because what a beautiful thing for the first time in your life, feeling like there's this group of people out there who want to embrace me just for being me and especially because of that. Yeah, I think YouTube really did boost my confidence and it's because you guys were just also being you. And on that note, 
I think we have reached the end of the video. If I didn't respond to one of your assumptions, I'm so very sorry. There were just too many to get through in the video, but I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this. If I didn't touch upon something that you're assuming, what is it? I want to know. Let me know down in the comments. I will be responding to a few of them, especially if I didn't cover it in the video. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Let me know down in the comments as well. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. Hit that notification bell to see my future videos coming up and I will see you guys in the next one. I love you. Bye.